Planning Commission meeting for Paulding County. At this time, I would ask if you have any audible devices, cell phones, maybe a beeper, please turn it to off or silent so it doesn't interrupt the proceedings. Audible devices, right? Um, this time, I would ask uh, if, if Planning Commission has had an opportunity to review the minutes that were in your packet and if you had any questions, comments, or edits. Hearing none, I will entertain a motion with regard to the minutes from the previous session of this body. Move, move to uh, accept the minutes for this. Motion presented. to approve by Ms. Turnbill, second by Mr. Aston. All in favor? Motion passes <laughs> six zero and one. Uh, everybody, I want to go ahead and go over a couple of ground rules. We're going to dispose of the uh, reading of how to participate in a public meeting. Uh, those are probably posted at the back table in this room or just outside in the lobby if you'd like to take one for a bit of quick reading. Um, also, this is a recommending body. Every application that's considered by this planning commission will be reviewed and then made a recommendation and forwarded to the governing body, be it Paulding County Board of Commissioners. And if that's the case, it would be at tonight's meeting at 7 o'clock for the Paulding County Board of Commissioners if it is in the jurisdiction of the City of Hiram. It will be forwarded to the City of Hiram and a date determined for the next available meeting for it to be heard. Again, anybody wishing to, or anybody, the applicant has 15 minutes to present their application and they may use all of that time or reserve some for rebuttal. Anybody wishing to speak on behalf of that application will speak during that same portion of 15 minutes. Anybody wishing to speak in opposition to the application or may have questions, comments, or concerns, you also have 15 minutes collectively to speak. If you have a number of people waiting to speak, please be courteous and remember they should have an ability to get up and speak at the lectern. You need to come forward to the lectern, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair, which is myself. And at this time, um, Mr. Robinson, do you have the first application? Okay. Good afternoon. First application is 2019-13-Z, application by Jonathan Jones to rezone approximately 16.265 acres from R2 suburban residential to R55 active adult residential district for age-restricted subdivision development. Property is located in landlot 1265, District 3, Section 3. It's on the west side of Mount Tabor Church Road, uh, west of Holland Road. It's in commission post one, and uh, that would have 81 lots, and staff has recommended approval with five printed stipulations, and we have received uh, three phone calls with questions. Is the applicant present? Applicant is present. If the applicant, please come around, sign in, state your name, address your comments to the chair. Good afternoon, Chair, Planning Commission, Board of Commissioners, and staff. My name is Jonathan Jones, and I'm with Elite. I'm here representing Blue Stem Development uh, for a proposed development of 16.25 acres on Mount Tabor Church Road, uh, just slightly past uh, Holland Road. Uh, the proposed development would be a R55 active adult residential district zoning. Um, proposed uh, number of units would be 81 units. Um, we are, my client is in acknowledgement that the project is in conformance with the 2017 comprehensive land use plan and that uh, the proposed buffers, we, are, we acknowledge those and accept those. And we have uh, reviewed the five zoning stipulations. We've had some discussion with the director of um, the DOT regarding the right turn lane. And we wish to request a modification of that zoning stipulation that right turn lane, right and left turn lanes be determined through uh, by, by way of a uh, traffic study um, and if warranted from traffic study then client would be more than willing to install said right and turn right and left turn lanes um, other than that I'm here to answer any questions you might have about this development or save the remainder of my time for rebuttal so just to confirm you are in agreement with all the remaining stipulations yes listed. sir I'm yes sir we will address the question that you've brought up with uh, the DOT director shortly okay. um, any questions for the applicant from the Planning Commission. Hearing none, Board of Commissioners, any questions to the applicant? Mr. Carmichael. 
If y'all would please pass the microphone down to Mr. Carmichael. I was uh, interested in a clarification on sewer. Um, I thought I was getting it mixed up with one of the other applications, but just go ahead and clarify why we're still on this one. Sewer, sewer is not immediately available at the property. There is another proposed um, development in this area, um, and sewer would mo in most likely be with a pump station down to the north of the lakes shown on the on the uh, on the map in your package um, to serve multiple developments in that area. Mr. Carmichael, did that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Are there any other questions to the applicant from either the Board of Commissioners or the Planning Commission? Thank you, Mr. Jones. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Hearing none, the other uh, Mr. Jones, Director. Um, the question that was brought up by the other Mr. Jones. Um, <laughs> Regarding the traffic study to whether or not a, it would warrant a left and right turn lane, do you have any kind of input on that that you would like to consider, have us consider? Yes, Mr. Jones had emailed me, Mr. Jones, the other Mr. Jones, um, about 10 o'clock this morning asking to uh, basically waive the left turning stipulation as put in the, um, for this development and instead do a traffic study to determine if that was warranted. We're agreeable to that. Again, the left and right turn lanes are in the development regulations. Um, if the traffic study did show that the turn lanes were not warranted, they would have to go through the development waiver committee anyways and get it approved through there also. So, All right. I'd like to ask Mr. Jones while he's got the microphone there. Is the minimum sight distance met? Uh, that looks, that's, that's a bad area right there as far as that curve there at Holland Road. Does that meet the minimum sight distance required? Again, as part of this, they're going to have to meet the requirements based on a 45 mile per hour speed limit, which Mount Tabor Church Road is. They're going to have to meet the left, the right, the stopping, and the left turn side distance. I've never seen anybody run 45 down that road. Well, I do. <laughs> Just saying. Oh, you do? Let the record show. <laughs> That's right. Getting a little feedback here. Sorry. Um, just one question on Mount Tabor Road. Is that a radar certified road so the posted speed limit is a certified speed limit? Yes, it is. Okay. It is, it is uh, certified for the Paulding County Sheriff's Office to run speed detection devices for 45 miles per hour. Thank you very much. Are there any other questions to the staff from the Planning Commission or Board of Commissioners? Okay. Is anyone here wishing to speak in opposition to this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, I will entertain a motion with regard to application 2019-13-Z. Please keep in mind that there is a modification requested to the requirement of the left turn lane, which would be stipulation number two, that um, a traffic study would be performed to determine the need and feasibility of a right and left turn lane. I'll um, take the motion now if anybody would give Motion it. to approve with the modification to stipulation number two. I have a motion to approve by Mr. Lowe with a modified number two stipulation. All second. other stipulations one through one, three, four, and five be in place. And a second by Ms. Turnbill. All in favor? Motion passes six, zero, and one. Again, this will be forwarded to the Board of Commissioners for their consideration this evening at 7. The applicant has to be present for it to be considered. Mr. Robinson. Next application, 2019-14-Z, City of Hiram. <clears throat> Application by Ahab Singh to rezone approximately 0 0.115 acres from R4 multifamily non-fee simple rental residential district to B1 general business district and to annex into the city of Hiram and combine to the adjoining 
uh, 0.45 acre track to the east. Uh, that particular track is zone B1, general business in the city of Hiram. Property is located in land lots 386, 387, 406, 407, District 2, Section 3. It's on the north side of Atlanta Highway, east of Cobbler Cove Drive. It's in Commission Post 1. My staff has recommended approval and uh, with no noted stipulations. And we have had just one call from uh, the adjoining property owner with questions. Is the applicant present? Yes. The applicant will please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Are you the applicant, sir? Yes, sir. State your name, please. My name is Ernest Williams. And you represent the applicant? Yes, I do. Okay. Uh, this is your opportunity to present your application to the Planning Commission to give us any details that you might feel are relevant for our consideration. No, not at all. You're good with what we've read? Would you repeat that, sir? I said, this is your opportunity to present your application to the, uh, to the Planning Commission and give us any details you feel would be relevant to our consideration of a well it is a uh, package store um, on Atlanta Highway and um, we're uh, adding on to the building and uh, we have started construction on the building. and this rezoning pertains to the sliver of property immediately to the to west the of the main property and that is you're going to combine the two is that what the intent yes is? sir all right. Is there any questions for the applicant regarding this application? Board of Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, sir. You can take your seat unless you have anything further you want to say. No, thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Is there anyone that would like to speak against this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? I have one question to uh, our county attorney, our planning commission attorney. This is a piece of property that's applied for rezoning while it is still in the unincorporated area of Paulding County. So this will be forwarded to the Board of Commissioners for a rezoning or will this be part of the overall adoption and annexation by the city of Hiram? So I've thought about that. I figured you'd ask that question. Uh, I believe tonight it'll go in front of the Board of Commissioners for, uh, for a decision on the rezoning application. Got it. Um, I think as it stands right now, it has not technically been annexed into the city of Hiram, although it's on the agenda. Hiram does have the work session tonight, but it will not be a voting session. considered or approved tonight. So I believe it would be appropriate for the Board of Commissioners to render the, the decision because as of tonight, it will remain in the county. Thank you very much. Mr. Robinson, will you make note of that, that we're going to render this decision and forward the recommendation to the Board of Commissioners for consideration for tonight's meeting at 7. At this time, I will entertain a motion with regard to 2019-14-Z. It says City of Hiram, but it will be Paulding County Board of Commissioners' consideration. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Mr. Lowe. Is there a second? Second. Second from Ms. Turnbill. All in favor? Motion passes 6011. You must be present for the application to be considered at tonight's meeting at 7 with the Board of Commissioners in this meeting room. Thank you, sir.
you. Next application is 2019 10 SUP application by Towercom uh, 5 LLC for a special use permit on approximately 45.68 acres for a 195 foot uh, monopo wireless telecommunication facility uh, extended to 199 with the uh, antenna on top. Uh, property is located in Landlot 1034, District 19, Section 2. It's on the east side of Cleburne Parkway, and it's east of Bennett Road, and it's in Commission Post 3. Uh, staff has recommended approval on this one also. And is the applicant present? Applicant is present. If you would please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Good afternoon, Planning Commission members. I'm Ellen Smith. I'm an attorney at Parker Poe, and I have the pleasure of representing the applicant with respect to, as, as Chris put it, a monopole cellular communications facility or a cell tower, if we want to just be plain about it. Um, this is on about a 48-acre piece of property. It meets all of the county's zoning requirements, and with your indulgence, I just give you a little bit of background as to how we got to this and who's looking to use it. Um, to give you background, AT&T's RF engineers are tasked with making sure your phones work in their network. They um, look at the demand for not only being able to make a phone call, but being able to use your phone and your smartphone for everything else that you do. And, that more importantly that my kids do now um, on their cell phone like watch videos or do homework uh, and classwork. They looked at this area of the county and if I can, is it okay with you if I put something up? I have hard copies of these as well but I thought it'd be um, just easier maybe to give you a little bit of view. This is similar to the, the map that Chris put up, um, just to give you an uh, overview of where they were looking at. Um, they have an existing network in this area of the county, um, but based on customer and radio frequency data, they identified a need for a new facility in this area, both to work with existing towers they already have, um, and to offload some traffic in the area, including to serve these residential areas that you see totally surrounding this property. AT&T asked Towercom, which is my client, uh, to help it locate a facility in the area, whether it was by co-location, whether it was on county-owned property, whether it was on anything that existed that would meet their radio frequency needs and be the right height to work with their network for their radio frequency needs. Towercom looked in this area for an existing tower. There is not one. The nearest AT&T tower is about two miles away, um, and there's not an existing tower that we could co-locate on in this area of the county. Instead, um, there's nothing uh, tall enough, you know, existing building tall enough, anything that would meet the need, and so they've proposed this new tower. Um, they also look for a piece of property that does not require any variance, any rezoning, that only requires the special exception permit, or special use permit, rather. Um, so they brought this application forward. The application materials that the county requires for your ordinance include everything from a phase one environmental survey um, that includes going through all of the FAA, FCC, and other national and state approvals, and, of course, uh, presenting this application to you all for a special use permit. Um, this property is 45.68 acres. It is part of the Bookout family estate, Bobby Jean Bookout. Uh, his family owns property to the west as well. Um, but what you see with the green arrow is the proposed site on this unimproved acre, acreage. Um, Towercom has leased about 3,600 feet, square feet. Uh, along with access and utility easement to get the tower onto the site. Um, and they're looking to build a 195-foot monopole. I want to just show you, if you don't mind, to give you an idea. This is hard to see, uh, but the little box that is right here is the proposed tower site. It is 300 feet to the property line to the north, 300 feet to the property line to the west, 
more than 500 feet to the property line to the east and more than 1,000 feet to the property line to the south. Your tower ordinance requires that the tower be constructed at least tower height plus 100 feet away from any property line. And we meet all of those requirements. We also submitted as part of our application materials all the structural calculations and analysis, including what is called, uh, what lawyers don't like to call it, but what we call it, a fall zone letter, which is a certified structural engineer's letter that says if the tower falls, if there is a catastrophe, and that includes hurricanes, you know, Cat 5 is the standard that the state requires and the, and the federal government requires. This tower will be built to that standard. Um, the fall zone radius is the height of the tower for this tower, but they're not designed to fall like a pin. They're designed to have a break point technology so that if there is high wind, anything like that, it crumples and falls on itself. It does not fall in a straight line, but even if it did, we've got more than 300 feet radius around this particular site. Just to give you a visual, and this admittedly is far away, but that is the proposed tower. There's a radio tower that's right here um, that would not support co-location, but just gives you a visual. That's from Hill Road. As you can see in the bottom, that's about 2,000 feet away. And this is a view from Mudlark Circle. That's about 1,500 feet away and the tower juxtaposed. This is just a photograph simulation of what it would look like. Uh, it is intended to be 195 feet. It would allow for co-location, not just AT&T. AT&T would be at a rad center of 190 feet, meaning its antennas would be at the top. It has room and is designed to support up to five additional carriers. So not just the traditional carriers, but should the county need it for E911 or other services, it would be structurally sound and would support the county's equipment as well, should that be a need in the future. Um, we submitted radio frequency engineering reports, and I'm happy to go through those. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have, and appreciate your consideration of this special use permit request. Thank you. I would um, just confirm with you, we may have questions for you. Sure. But the radio frequency report you did did not generate any kind of concerns with cro with crossing up with other signals, correct? Correct. Okay. You said you did the report. I just want to make sure that everybody That's understood that. Is there any questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Board of Commissioners? And that was quick. You know, didn't mean to cut anybody off. Anybody have questions? All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Anyone wishing to speak in opposition to this application may have questions, comments, or concerns. At this time, I will entertain a motion for application 2019-10-SUP. Move to approve as presented. Second. Second. Any questions, comments, or concerns? I have a motion to approve as presented. Second. A motion to approve by Ms. Turnbull, a second by Mr. Aston. All in favor? Motion passes 6, 0, and 1. Again, it will be forwarded to tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners for their consideration. Thank you. You're welcome. Are you leaving right now? Okay, I'd like to have your card before you leave. Absolutely. We'll discuss something else. Yes, sir. Robinson. Next application is 2019-11 SUP application by Richard M. Mayo for a special use permit on approximately 35 acres for wedding slash reception venue. Property is located in land lots 927 and 964 so in District 19, Section 3. It's on the north side of Buckhannon Circle, east of Old Yorkville Road. It's in Commission Post 2. Uh, staff has recommended approval with eight printed stipulations. 
and uh, we have not any noted calls of opposition or anything on this one, and the applicant is present. If the applicant would please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Chair, committee. My name is Richard Mayo. Um, I'm looking to rezone this property to um, special use. Um, I would like to primarily use the property as a residence um, while having a small boutique wedding venue in the front with um, minimal events, no more than four a month. Um, I'd like to maintain a hundred foot buffer on the exterior of the property um, to minimize impact to fellow neighbors um, and really just have a upscale small weddings you know a few times a month okay all right are you familiar with the eight listed stipulations yes I, I am the, the recommendations yes well, yes and, and I'm agreeable to all of those but I was gonna see if we could have a little bit of exception here um, in my in my site plans, I, I wanted to have an outside uh, open air pole barn with um, for dancing, and I was wondering if we could have outdoor music. I'm not looking to have you know a, a concert of any sorts, but you know minimal low decibel music so guests could enjoy outdoor dancing. The second um, is that the driveway at the beginning of the property there is a pond, and the driveway to access the remaining the rest of the property the driveway might need to come into the hundred foot buffer slightly at the beginning of the property also i was going to ask um, if we can conclude the events before 11 p.m as opposed to the 10 p.m i understand if these are deal breakers but these are things that i was going to check and see restate the last thing you said uh, I, I'm open to suggestion. I just wanted to, you know, see if it was a possibility to, to go to 11 p.m. as opposed to the recommended 10 p.m. and conclude before 11 p.m. All right. Well, we can, uh, we can take that into consideration. Thank uh, you. We'll speak with to the staff. I don't know if there's anything that could be amended during this meeting. It may be a requirement for you to speak to staff after this meeting takes place of course um, and then that will be up to the Board of Commissioners ultimately to determine what if any modifications to the existing stipulations are made um, I know that uh, the driveway and please correct me if I'm wrong but the driveway moving within any kind of a non disturbance buffer such as a pond um, there's a 25 foot state mandated non disturbance buffer and then there's a 75 another 50 feet which is a total of 75 feet that the county adds to that, that would require a variance, which is different from this process through the county's um, um, Board of Zoning Appeals. Is, Mr. Robinson, would that be correct? That's correct. Okay. So that would have to be determined and then modified sub after this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Um, as far as sound, um, Mr. Phillips, do you want to address that yes sir just addressing that Paulding County has a noise ordinance uh, in regard to music uh, it basically prohibits music from being played after 10 o'clock in the evening at a point that it's clearly audible at a distance of 50 feet so that ordin noise ordinance is going to control activities on this property but softly played there's no issues <laughs> I don't know how you gauge Most that. Most likely, yeah. <laughs> you can stand 50 feet away and see if you can still hear it. Um, and as far as an amendment to the time, um, Mr. Robinson, can you tell me where that stipulation comes from? That would be stipulation number eight, is that correct? That's correct. Normally on uh, any type of rural area businesses, uh, it's normally recommended around 10 p.m. as a closing time recommendation uh, is that based on just practice that's or? that's it's actually uh, it's actually for a rural business that you're you're okay. uh, 
they're limited to 10 p.m. closing. Okay. I know this is a special use permit, but we were kind of trying to keep it in that realm also. Any questions from the Planning Commission to the applicant? How close is the, how close is the nearest neighbor? The closest neighbor is going to be, you know, from, I mean, I guess it really depends where you stand. The property is almost 700 feet wide and almost a half a mile in, in depth square. Um, you know, if you're, there was a previous existing driveway at the beginning of the property, the closest neighbor, I'm going to guess, is going to say 500 feet from the previous driveway when I purchased the property in April. Any other questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Uh, Mr. Aston. Yeah, you met with uh, Captain Kendrick and his team with the Paulding County Fire and Rescue, and they, uh, uh, he wrote a letter with eight uh, things to consider. Are you in agreement with all those? Yes, sir, 100%. Okay. I wanted to ask Wayne Barron with the Fire Department if they had any concerns with this. Mr. Barron, would you care to step to the microphone? <clears throat> I just wanted to know if you had any concerns with this venue, if everything had been met as far as your standards. Yeah, when we met with Mr. Mayo, we, we discussed the requirements because of the, of the life safety code on the assembly occupancy, and he's agreed to, like I said, meeting all the requirements of the code for those. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Are there any other questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Board of Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Mayo. Thank you. you. Take your seat. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Is there anyone here that would wish to speak in opposition to this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? All right, at this time, I will entertain a motion with regard to ap application 2019-11-SUP. And again, the motion, you can consider the requested modifications. Uh, again, the driveway would have to be determined at a subsequent meeting of the Plan uh, Pauling County Board of Zoning Appeals for any variance to the non-disturbance buffer around the pond. The other items uh, asked to be considered was the sound, but Mr. Phillips addressed that with regard to the county's ordinance. And then there is the amendment of time from a 10 a.m. closing to an 11, excuse me, 10 p.m. closing to an 11 p.m. closing. So please Motion make, to approve. I have a motion to approve. With, uh, striking um, stipulation number five, since the noise ordinance controls that, um, and then give consideration to the 11 p.m. Okay, I have a motion to approve by Mr. Lowe, and is that striking number five altogether? Striking number five altogether. So, I mean, if the county ordinance controls it, why, why put it here? Let's, I'm fine with that too, but Mr. Phillips, do you want to chime in on that? If I'm looking, if I'm looking at um, applicant agrees to no outside audio system. So Mr. Lowe, that's, that's the subject of the, of the striking. Right. Yeah. He would, uh, he, what that means is that he can use outside audio systems, but those outside audio systems need to be in compliance with the county no noise ordinance. Which would have to be done anyway. Yes. So mm -hmm. forgive me for my caution. I just no, want to make sure. It's a good question. All right. So with the striking of number five, what was the additional comment you made, Mr. Lowe? That just since the county noise ordinance would ultimately control that. All right. So I have a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. I have a second from Ms. Turnbill. All in favor? Motion passes 6 0 and 1. And again, this application will be forwarded to tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners at 7 o'clock. Applicant will need to be present for it to be considered. Yes, sir. I didn't hear the entire thing, and I don't think Chuck did either. But um, the, we were listening; we just didn't 
here. Um, <laughs> did that did that motion for a recommendation of approval also include the change to stipulation number eight for 11 p.m.? Yes. Thank change you. to 11 p.m. Mm -hmm. I, well, I consider the change. Okay. So the motion was to be made that it also amended the time to 11 p.m. on stipulation number eight. Do we need to go through the process again, Mr. Phillips, just to make sure? Mr. Lowe, is that your motion? That was my motion, yes. Yeah. Ms. Turnbull, is that what you seconded? Uh, I believe. Okay. Is, is there any commissioner who... Uh, so there's a motion and a second right. in agreement. Do I need to call for the vote again? I would say just call for it. For I'll call for the vote on that motion then with the understanding that it also amends the closing time from 10 p.m. to 11 p.m. All in favor? All opposed? You're opposed. Motion then passes 5, 1, and 1. I think we're good. Again, the motion, uh, this motion, the application will be forwarded to tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners for their consideration. And Mr. Robinson. Okay. Next application, 2019-02 LUP, application by Frankie Willingham for a land use permit on approximately 17.9227 acres for a shop for landscape company and some storage area for hardwood for trees, fruit trees, and shrubs. Property is located in land lot 1138, District 2, Section 3. It's on the south side of Nebo Road, west of Dallas Nebo Road. It's in Commission Post 3. Uh, recommendation is approval with three printed stipulations. And we have had uh, calls with questions and concerns from adjoining property owner. And the applicant uh, representative is, is present. The applicant representative would please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. <clears throat> Good afternoon again. Uh, my name is Jonathan Jones with Elite. I am here representing Mr. Willingham for the requested land use permit. Um, he uh, intends to build his personal home on this property and he intends to build his business on the northeast corner of the property. That would be the property that abuts uh, what's considered agriculture now, but I believe there's a zoning for a PRD by Mr. Brock in that location. Um, the area has a, uh, I guess, a mixture in that, in that corridor there of, of I guess, a, they've got a store in the Ingalls and PRD sounds like uh, applications up, and then there's uh, some church property and then the school. Um, my client has reviewed the zoning stipulations that have been provided, of which uh, one requires a 25 buck buffer. Um, it says along the Nebo frontage, uh, and uh, that, that's, that's an acceptance to my client, and he also agrees to build a commercial width drive for excess in and out. Um, I'll be happy to answer any additional questions or use the rest of my time for rebuttal. So no objection to the stipulations? Then. No objection. They're acceptable as the stipulations. Are there any questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Jonathan, the uh, access off of Claire Reese Road is going to be his personal residence, right? Um, he, I don't think he's decided exactly where he's going to build his home. So, um, But, yeah, he, he most likely will provide access off Claire Reese to his personal home. Okay, and the shop would be off of Nebo? Off of so. Nebo, yes, sir, in that northeast corner there. Okay, there we're Odyssey's house is old house. Old house, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. That's correct. Yes, sir. All right. Any other questions to the applicant from Planning Commission? Uh, Jonathan, he's in the landscaping business. Uh, exactly how many pieces of equipment will he be parking there? Do you have any idea? Well, so he and I had a discussion so that I could get familiar with answering that question. Most of his um, equipment stays from job to job, as, as most contractors does. Yeah, he says that he owns about 15 to 20 pieces of equipment, but that includes trailers and everything from lawnmowers to, to skid steers and such as that. He doesn't own anything larger than a mini X, so he doesn't own track hose or dozers or anything of that nature. Um, so uh, he would have limited um, storage. Uh, his current facility in the city of Hiram, I'll be honest with you, I don't even think he stores equipment at that location. Um, 
His biggest need, quite honestly, is to have the ability to store some of his products inside, um, his pine straw and his hay and irrigation materials and that. And then um, he would like to get to where he can store some of his trees and landscape materials on site instead of having to schedule them to freight time them and deliver them to the site exactly when he needs them because he doesn't really have a yard to store the, the actual materials. So it'd be more for, for tree storage and, and brush sto uh, uh, bush storage and stuff of that nature. So um, the, the maximum would be if we he had no work and he, he basically had all those equipment there, it'd be less than 20 pieces, but typically his equipment's off site. Any other questions from the Planning Commission to the applicant? Mr. Hanson. Is he going to have any larger equipment at a later date to come in to be parked on this land? He, he has no intentions of that. Um, you know, this thing's renewable every two years, Mr. Henson. Uh, you know, I, I, I would say that it definitely could be addressed, or if you wanted to put place his own stipulation that he couldn't have some, you know, large excavator or something, I think he would be okay with that. It's not his intent. He owns a landscape yeah. company. He doesn't intend to develop it into a grading company or anything. Um, okay. So it's not his intent to do that, to be honest with you. All right, thank you. Yes, sir. Any other questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Board of Commissioners, any questions? Is there anyone here that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Hearing none, is there anyone that wishes to speak in opposition to this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? You would come to the lectern, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Hey, good afternoon. My name's Robert McCulley. Um, a few questions, and I think um, this gentleman maybe had answered a few, but um, this new barn or building that's going to be constructed is going to be on the northeast corner, which that's closest to the intersection where Ingalls and the Chevron and all that is. Um, our concern is our property is on Clarice Road right at the corner. Um, of um, Clarice and Nebo directly across the street from Nebo Elementary. Um, out of the three houses that are there, two of those houses have kids. And um, that is not a real heavily traveled road. So, um, you know, there's some bicycles there occasionally and such as that coming from the neighborhoods back down Clarice Road. So our concern there is the driveway for this maybe new business coming out on Clarice, which I think you touched on that, that that wasn't the intent. It was gonna be on Nebo Road. But, you know, that, that being said, I could see that being changed and it being different. So that, that's our main concern is, 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 is dump trucks and that kind of equipment coming out on Clarice. And, and then too, the other thing is, you talk about a 25 foot bumper um, you know, they, they talk about all sides except the west side, which is the Clarice Road side. It doesn't say anything in here in the paperwork about any kind of bumper or anything there to maybe block the view of what this may look like. Okay. So your, your question is about the buffer on Clarice Road? On the Clarice Road right. side, correct and the possibility of a driveway that's non-commercial. Got it. Anything else, sir? Um, Brittany, did you? I think, um, I think those questions, um, plus, you know, the staff comments, I know there's 11 questions that are on the staff comments that I guess will be considered and talked about tonight, maybe. Um, uh, for it to receive staff comments, that's what the staff considers when giving us a recommendation or giving us the stipulations. They've already considered all of that criteria. Okay. So basically, I guess the answer to the 11 were the three that 
of what they oh. studied, it generated their proposing okay. the three listed stipulations. Okay, fine. But That's good. we will we will have further discussion in this meeting once you're done with your presentation. Sure. About the questions you've brought up. Okay. Th those are those are our concerns at, at this time. Yeah. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. McCauley. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak in opposition or may have questions, comments, or concerns mm -hmm. regarding this application? Hearing none, Mr. Jones, would you care to step back to the mm -hmm. lectern? Um, yes, yes, sir. Um, would I guess you know, with the question being from Mr. McCauley about the concern of a commercial drive, you've indicated that the business portion of this property would be in the northeast corner. That's correct. With the intended ingress, egress being on Nebo Road? Yes, sir. And we'd be fine with the zone stipulation. No commercial equipment shall access Clarice Road for any reason. All right. And um, it's it's 1,150 feet, I think, to their their property. But my client would also be available, uh, be amenable to putting a 25-foot planted buffer on the west side. He owns a landscape company, so I, don't think, <laughs> I think he'd be okay with that. And uh, you can't, you you won't be able to see it, but I can't guarantee you that one day he doesn't take the trees down. But that buffer will, will be there. So if you want to add that stipulation where it said 25 foot buffer along Nebo, and you put west and western property line, um, he'd be amenable to that. All right. And western property line. Just make sure I'm getting it right. Yes, sir. All right. Is there anything else that you wish to add to the no, discussion? Sir, somebody else has a question. Are there any questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Hearing none, Board of Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Jones. You. At this time, I will entertain a motion with regard to application 2019-02-LUP. And again, there's been an offer by the applicant's representative to add uh, the additional stipulation of no commercial drive on Clarice Road, as well as an amendment to the stipulation number three, which would, uh, excuse me, I'm sorry, number two, stipulation number two, which would also add a 25 foot buffer along the western property line along with Nebo Road. Anybody willing to make that motion? Make a motion to do the four stipulations with the addition of no commercial access on Clarice Road and the 25 foot buffer on number two along Nebo Road and Clarice Road. So I have a motion by Mr. Leggett. Do I have a second? second. By Mr. Lowe. All in favor? Motion passes six, zero, and one. Again, the application will be forwarded to tonight's meeting of the Board of Commissioners for consideration. The applicant must be present for it to be considered. Mr. Robinson. Next application, 2019-03 LUP. Application by Jonathan D. Robbins for land use permit renewal on approximately 1.995 acres for a part-time firearm repair business and an accessory structure. Property is located in land lots 227 and 232. District 19, Section 2, it's on the south side of Sleepy Hollow Road. Uh, it's off an easement, uh, and it's east of Ralston Road. The address is 1004 Sleepy Hollow Road. It's in Commission Post 3. Uh, staff is recommended approval on this one. Applicant is present. If the applicant will please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. <coughs> My name is Jonathan Robbins, and here I am again doing a renewal uh, for my land use permit. I don't know, this is probably about the seventh or eighth time in the last 15 years. Nothing's really changed. I thought you looked familiar. <laughs> I get that a lot. <laughs> and is there any questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Board of Commissioners? The requirement under the OUP is that it is renewable after two years. Mm -hmm. um, that's the way that the ordinance is written within the zoning ordinance. So, 
Mr. Robinson, if you want to correct me on any of that, you're more than welcome to. That's correct. This time, that is correct. Every two years. <laughs> He's in a very exclusive club. There's a lot of them around here. Mr. Robinson, thank you very much. Uh, before I leave, I would like to express my appreciation to Chris and Braden Robinson for the help that they've helped me with in the last, this time. This, this last time for renewal has been one of the easiest and no, not near as many hoops to jump through to be able to just to renew. Uh, and whoever else was involved in making those decisions, whether it was the commissioners or this board here, but I really appreciate the fact that it was just really streamlined and a whole lot easier to, to renew. Well, thank you very much for your comments, sir. And I know that I'm extremely biased, but I agree with him. You have some of the best staff that Paul and Kenny can ever hope to have working for y'all. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Is there anyone here that would wish to speak in opposition to this application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none at this time, I will entertain a motion on application 2019-03-LUP. Motion to approve. I have a motion to approve from Mr. Lowe, a second by Mr. Henson. All in favor? Motion passes 6-0 and 1. And the same thing, it'll be forwarded to the Board of Commissioners tonight for their consideration. You do need to be present for it to be considered. Quit looking at me like that. I'm getting caught up. Hey, y'all were waiting on me a few minutes ago. Please proceed. Application uh, 2019-04 LUP. Application by Robert Cofield for a land use permit renewal on approximately 8.93 acres for restoration of older hot rods and classic automobiles in an accessory structure. Property is located in Landlot 889, District 2, Section 3. It's on the northwest side of Rich Davis Road, south of Hiram Sudi Road. Address is 594 Rich Davis Road. It's in Commission Post 1. Uh, staff is recommended approval with three stipulations. And again, is it the past one, the last one? It was. This is this is a renewal also. Thank you. Applicant is present. The applicant, please come around, sign in, state your name, and address your comments to the chair. Okay, uh, I'm just on renewal and nothing has changed from the last time. Are there any questions to the applicant from the Planning Commission? Board of Commissioners, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Cofield. Uh, thank you. Is there anyone else that would wish to speak on behalf of this application? Is there anyone that would wish to speak in opposition to the application or may have questions, comments, or concerns? Hearing none, at this time, I will entertain a motion on application 2019-04-LUP. I have a motion with the three stipulations. I have a motion for Mr. Leggett with the three listed stipulations. Do I have a second? Second. Second for Mr. Lowe. All in favor? Motion passes 6-0 and 1. Thank you, everybody. At this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. A motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn by Mr. Lowe. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Ms. Turnbill. All in favor? Motion passes 601. Y'all have a marvelous rest of your month.